What is up, YouTube? It's your favorite transparent YouTuber, Transparent Hoodie, back at you with another manga recommendation, I guess you can call this. Um, so yeah, pretty much, um, I saw the response from everybody that, uh, pretty much either checked out the video that I made for, um, um, Miracle Chan, and I read some of the responses, and honestly, like, a lot of the responses was, like, overwhelmingly, like, positive, so that was a, I guess you can say more or less a newer series that's coming up in the woodworks, so there was another series, or there is another series that I'm reading currently right now that I'm 100% caught up, it isn't a new chapter as of me making this video right now, um, it's called, um, Gutter and Strength, it's a sport-related series of, honestly, like, I, I, I would say it's a female-centered series where, like, the, most of the predominant characters that you see in the beginning of the series is female. But yes, it's a sports series about bowling and women. Um, more or less, it's... And I don't want to spoil... Obviously, I don't want to spoil anything because, again, it's a very short series. Only, I think, 24 to 23 chapters to its name right now, so I'm not going to spoil anything. It's going to be a clean review just talking about just basic and vague concepts I do want to talk about of this story because I do believe it's very very good like I really do and did enjoy it as I was going through but just to be um transparent for my namesake obviously I don't know like it did take me a bit to get to that point of reading it consistently because more or less I was kind of reading it every now and then kind of um I guess you could say kind of losing interest at some parts and other parts of the story 100% captivated me again so that's kind of where I'm at when it comes to this story um for the most part uh the only thing that I'll probably say about this story that's kind of hit and miss and will definitely be hit and miss for a lot of people is just the backdrop of what the story is aka bowling so just like any other sports series that you're not 100% familiar with the sport or you're kind of iffy on the sport you kind of have to rely on whether whether it's character interactions or whether it's just the over-the-top nature of the show itself. Those are the kind of two other elements that I guess any anime or manga that's creating a sports series kind of rely on to just captivate their audience and keep them reading or watching, right? But this series, because it's bowling, because obviously there is no anime to this, it kind of either has to be one of those things where you have to kind of have this certain level of blind faith that the series can get better. Also, you have to have this certain level of just like, okay, am I willing just to grind this up? Because honestly, I can understand how if you were to see this series have maybe 200 chapters and you find out from chapter one it's about bowling, I can understand why one, that's intimidating as hell. Two, you might not be inclined to read it because you're going to be telling yourself like, what, this is just a series about bowling. But I feel like this right now, don't. I would 100% recommend not waiting for chapters to stack up for this thing because like I said like it's for sure a slow burn and the pacing for it is very very well the pacing isn't bad but for the most part it is slow like most of the time you don't really get bowling you get character interaction and story built up and background built up for the characters not necessarily saying that this has a very robust world or anything like that but for the most part like character interactions is heavily and i'm gonna go into that a little later in the video but character interaction is super super heavily heavily relied on in this series like they don't 100 percent rely on the sport they rely on these character interactions which is i really like these character interactions for what they are so obviously we gotta go into characters so like the first character we're introduced to is um azue Azumichi Azumichi Toko. Azumichi Toko, for the most part, is a very chill type of woman. She's super reserved. She don't talk too much. She kind of keeps to herself. Um, she's not, uh, I guess you could say she's not really the outgoing type when it comes to just her sociable skills. Like, she kind of just, like, you know, do what she got to do in school, do what she got to do in academics. I wouldn't even say she's, like, the most crazy intelligent like she's just an average learner average student there's not much you could really pull and take away from her character um so her best friend though she obviously she has a friend this is an anime she's not gonna be 100 percent lonely she has her friend um i think her name is um damn N N nijiri? nijiri it's um nijiri um koyomi or kuyumi so it's nijiri koyumi and her character is super outgoing but at the same time, they do play this little 
Okay, her character for the most part seemingly is outgoing. You know, she's very vocal with her emotions. She's very vocal with herself. She's very super expressive. But for the most part, like, kind of like Toko, she doesn't give herself the opportunity to make a lot of friends. As far as we know, we don't know if there's any other people that um, Koyumi kind of knows in the story that just hasn't been introduced yet. But as of right now, like, she's pretty much in the same boat as um, Toko, where she unfortunately don't have much friends outside of Toko, and Toko don't have much friends outside of Koyumi. So, yeah. So that's pretty much that's pretty much it for those two characters when it comes to just who they are. Very simple. I feel like they're not overcomplicated, but what makes these characters overcomplicated is definitely they're just I, I guess you could say their interactions with one another on top of just some of their worldly views on just how they view themselves on top of how they view others. So that's very, very important in the story. I think. All of that's going to be talked about later. I'm just going to run through the characters real quick. Um, you also get the gym chief, um, the gym teacher that they go that goes to their school. That's their um, obviously academic advisor. Um, she honestly isn't a part of the story all that much. Like for the most part, she inevitably starts running the bowling club that um, they join. But for the most part, like she has this one little fetish or kink about her that personally like i don't like i'm not gonna say it in the video obviously because i would prefer you guys kind of find out find it out but for the most part i'm not a big fan of it like it's one of those things where i don't hate it but for a hundred percent sure it's a whatever thing like i i i just don't care for her little gimmick i i do like when she actually embodies her teacher role like when she is in trying to be just a good academic advisor to the youth and trying to just get the best out of her obviously her students that's the kind of role i kind of like that she kind of a situate herself in sadly we don't see that much from the um gym teacher i'm um, sad it sucks too that i don't know her name but we don't see that much from the gym teacher which kind of make her character kind of mad to me at the moment because the only thing that they kind of propagate about her is just that oh she has this porky gimmick that's kind of whatever so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna for sure keep my eye on her because I do feel like she this character has a lot of interesting potential but right now it's just not being shown at all um there's also another teacher that's a part of the story as well that's kind of like hit and miss for the most part like he pops up here and there he really doesn't do much outside of maybe one chapter where like he was kind of important and he kind of just completely falls off uh, I don't know if the story will ever use this teacher again but for the most part like he did seem like a pretty cool academic teacher I do like his um I, I kind of do like his motive of why he do what he does because of just something that happened to him in his past in his youth so I, I thought that was kind of cool granted like that situation that happened in his youth that kind of like spearheads who he is today it is kind of whatever like i'm it's not it's 100 percent. it's not bad though i've definitely seen worse but it's not bad i, I still like it like I, I still think it was like a little cool cute thing that they did for him to kind of make him have this like dedication and devotion to his students to make sure that you know they follow this clear right path and not stray off of it like i really do like his character um also there is um toko's mom so Toka's mom is in the story here and there. Like uh, she's obviously a very important figure later on because they allude to it. So I'm pretty sure like down the line, we're gonna probably see some intense stuff. Like even within the um, first 24, 23 chapters of this series, like you do get to see her. I don't wanna even say at her full potential, like, but you do get to see her showcase a certain level of skill when it comes to bowling. That just makes this, that just makes her character kind of feels nice. Like she's definitely the goal. She's the, she's what she's that character that you see in any sports series. That obviously your your main cast of characters strive to be, and they acknowledge her as a professional or as a top. Um, I guess you could say top tier player. You know. So yeah. So those are pretty much the characters you're going to get introduced to. Now my favorite part, I and mean, this is just the best part of this whole series. Like this series is super layered to me, man, because there's so many topics and there's so many things that as a young female, and even as a young man, to give you a little perspective of what most women go through, like I, I thought that was actually pretty dope. Like that little inner commentary that they had within the story. Because like I said earlier on in the video, like the, unfortunately the backdrop of this story is bowling. So like obviously bowling has not been in the limelight 
as of like as it hasn't been as popular and in the limelight as it was back in the day like i feel like bowling was way more of a popular sport back then obviously it's still a niche sport but it's still gotten the notoriety that it deserved so this series being about bowling is kind of hit miss for a lot of people because not everybody sees bowling in this light and the story itself also touches on that fact as well where it's kind of just like you have to understand even though you know bowling it may not be the most popular sport there's other ways and avenues that we can still make it a relevant sport to this day for the niche community that support it on top of the different you know you know benefactors and rich fans that still indulge and support the sport for what it is just to keep it alive so yeah i thought that was pretty dope that even the series itself acknowledges that this is not a big sport but for the most part like people and characters are trying to just solidify it and try to keep it alive too so yeah those are one of the, I guess, layered contents that you're going to get from this series. On top of just, there's just so much. There's just so much just, I, I really want to say, there's so much good personal moments with each of these individual characters going through their own little stuff, their own little morals and stuff like that. And I feel like this story doesn't cheapen it at all. Um, keep in mind, this story is an edgy. It's an edgy. So... The one thing I, I kind of have to praise it for is the way that it handles its quote-unquote sexual content. Because obviously, you're going to see some boobs, you're going to see panty slips, you're going to see bra slips. But for the most part, it, it's not bad or overbearing. Like, for the most part, like, the character themselves, they're kind of, no they're normal characters. Like, I would say in most etchies or most harems or most anything that has to do with anything sexual, like, these characters or the author kind of put these characters in situations and just scenarios where, like, all right, this is kind of being too over-exaggerated to the point where it's just, like, unenjoyable because, obviously, now you're conflicting with the story. The story's conflicting now because you having these heavily sexual elements within the story itself, and then it's kind of just, like, at the end of the day, where I'm still trying to read the narrative for what it is. So it's kind of just this tug of war that authors kind of play when it comes to, like, these harem-based stories or edgy-based stories when it comes to just the content and when it comes to just how we make this an etchy, how we sexualize these characters in a way where we can appeal to that male audience or that female audience that indulge and like that type of stuff. So like for the most part, like I I did like it. Like it was very just a calm thing. Like for the most part, I feel like the, I guess camera, the camera angles that they kind of use for the most part to kind of insinuate that yes, this is still an etchy and the content is still sexual. That's kind of how they get you to uh, that's that's kind of how they get you to really know that this is an etchy, but for the most part, like characters themselves, they're not grabbing boobs, they're not ripping their shirts off outside. Yeah, they're not ripping their shirts off. Um, and for like, and for the characters that are like a little sexualized, like honestly, the story does give them a really good explanation, or the story the story does give them a really good explanation of why they are the way they are, and I kind of do like that. Like, um, Kiyomi probably for the most part is the most re quote unquote revealing character where she's openly revealing, but you'll understand why she is that way in the story. Like they do give her a, a nice little explanation. Um, whether or not you accept that explanation, it's kind of up to you as the reader and your perception of like, what are you reading? But for the most part, while I was reading and how I was reading it, like I just felt like it was an okay thing. It wasn't, it wasn't the craziest explanation in the world and it didn't need to be. Like it was just a nice, small thing just to solidify that this is the way she is and this is the way how she expresses herself so yeah yeah like these characters are super layered man like even going on to toko like i, I even like the kind of dynamic that they even giving her i hope i really really do hope she grows out of it but just to give you a little context because this is something that's going to be spoken about within the first chapter or first two chapters is that toko is she unfortunately isn't comfortable within her own skin. Like she doesn't feel comfortable at all. She has like a nasty, nasty insecurity about her body. And she just wished that she wasn't the way she was or she didn't develop the way she developed because obviously she developed very, very robust. Like she turned into a very robust female. Like her body has grown, has grown exponentially for a girl in her, for a girl of her ethnicity on top of a girl in high school like she's grown a lot 
being the Japanese girl is not very common to see a lot of them be as big as her. So when she do look at like some of the other girls in her school and some of the other women that she's just around, like it's kind of one of those things where it's just like, wow, I stand out and I don't like standing out. So, and that's another thing as well. Like because of her body, she stands out so much. And just going back off of what I was saying in the beginning parts of the video where she's kind of just a loner and for the most part keeps to herself, she kind of doesn't like this unnecessary attention on top of that attention being on her body that she just she just doesn't like. So I thought that was a really, really cool thing about her character. I don't want to get into too much about each of the individual characters, obviously, but for the most part, like, trust me, like, the character aspect of this story is super entertaining. And not to say that the bowling aspect is boring. I mean, it starts off kind of boring if, again, if you have no interest in bowling, like myself. I saw this series, I just, I, I, I guess I get the synopsis, like a small little read, and then, because I didn't read the whole synopsis, I just saw the cover art and some of the, like, pictures for it, and I was kind of hammering for, like, a short sports series, so I just read this. So, yeah. But for the most part, yeah. The backdrop of bowling is definitely going to throw you off if you're not interested in it, but the story do find other ways to keep you invested and keep you entertained with the story itself, and I really like it. But, yeah. Guys, um, I, I think I pretty much gave you more than the bulk of what this series is about. Um, it's really enjoyable. I, I did like it. I did like it. The interaction was really good. Um, it's a very, quote, I, I want to say it's a modern story where it touches on like maybe modern themes for maybe a young high schoolers or maybe later high schoolers or seniors right now. Um, I definitely could see a couple of kids within middle school reading this story as well just to get a perspective on just, just other people's, you know, like issues and dilemmas that they kind of have as young adults or just young kids. Just some of the things that they just don't feel comfortable with, whether it's their body or their personality or just who they are. This story can hopefully be that like turning point for you to just know that everything eventually is a, like you're always going to have people that's gonna want to just make sure that you're okay and you're always going to be comfortable with yourself. Like you don't have to put on a facade or you don't have to hide yourself. Like you can always be comfortable with yourself. And I feel like that's the potential route that this story could be going, hopefully, but only time can tell. So yeah. I like to thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate you guys, you know, subscribing, hitting that like button if you really did like this video. And don't worry, I'm going to definitely be reviewing and covering more manga in the future that is new and shorter so you guys don't have to feel intimidated by like 800 plus chapters, 500 plus chapters. It's going to be short series that I'm going to be recommending you guys so you can pretty much catch up quick whether you're on your way to work or whether you're on your way to school or whether you're just have some free time because obviously the times that we're living in now you could probably just pick up this series and it's going to be a one two three thing. so yeah i like to thank you guys for watching i really do appreciate you guys giving this video the time again hit the like and subscribe and you guys have a good one peace